The autumn sun hung low in the sky. It cast long shadows that stretched like skeletal fingers across the quiet suburban streets. I just finished school and was eager to get home. My mind already drifted towards the video games I planned to play. The fallen leaves crunched under my feet, their rustling filling the silence. I turned onto Oak Street and felt an uneasy sensation prickling at the back of my neck. It was like I was being watched. My pace quickened. I glanced over my shoulder. I saw nothing unusual, at first. As I rounded another corner, I noticed a figure lingering under a lamppost. He was tall, dressed in a long dark coat and a wide-brimmed hat that obscured his face. My heart skipped a beat, but I couldn't figure out why. It was autumn. All kinds of people were outside at this time. He was probably just taking a break from raking leaves or something. I shook my head and tried to dismiss my irrational fear. I was sure I'd never seen him before, yet something about him seemed ominously familiar. The stranger didn't move. Just stood there like a statue. Watching, I grew determined to reach the safety of my home. I sped up and almost broke into a run. I could panic there, where the doors and windows were locked. I felt his eyes bore into my back. Home was just a few blocks away, but every step now felt like miles. I braved another glance behind me. He now walked, slowly and deliberately. He followed me, but maintained a fixed distance. Panic surged through me, and I sprinted the remaining distance to my front door. I burst into my house. I slammed the door shut. My breath came in ragged gasps. I pressed my back against the door and listened for any sign that he followed me. The silence was deafening. I gathered my courage. I peered through the peephole. The street outside was empty, the man gone. Relief washed over me, but it was short-lived. I didn't say anything to my parents. I felt childish and silly that I'd gotten so scared. That night, I lay in bed and shadows danced across my room. They took on twisted, monstrous forms. My heart raced with every creak in the house. I kept picturing the dark stranger standing silently outside my window, watching, waiting. Days passed, and though I saw no sign of the man, I couldn't get him out of my mind. I also couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. I was constantly looking over my shoulder. My anxiety grew with each passing day. I didn't know which was worse, the idea it really was all in my mind, or the idea he was out there waiting. I confided in my parents, but they dismissed my fears as an overactive imagination. That evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, I was alone in the house. I'd almost convinced myself it was all a dream. I'd even started forgetting what he looked like. My parents had gone to a dinner party. A few hours after they left, I'd just finished watching a comedy. I realized the house was unnaturally quiet. The ticking of the grandfather clock in the living room sounded like thunder in the stillness. Suddenly, there was a knock at the door. I froze. My blood turned to ice. I knew it was him, although I can't say why. I just knew it. I crept to the door. My hand trembled as I reached for the knob. I looked through the peephole and my heart stopped. The stranger stood on my porch closer than ever before. His face was still hidden in shadow, but I could feel his piercing gaze. I stumbled back, heart pounding in my chest. The knocking grew louder, insistent, desperate. I ran to the kitchen and grabbed a knife. My only thought was to protect myself. I backed into the corner. My eyes remained fixed on the front door. The knocking suddenly stopped. The house plunged into an eerie silence. I suddenly thought of the back door. It was right behind me. I flipped the deadbolt and backed away towards the other side of the kitchen. I waited. Minutes felt like hours, but the man never came to the back door. He didn't try any other way to break in. Slowly, my intense terror subsided. I gathered the courage to return to the front door. I kept the knife in hand. I looked through the peephole once more. My body still trembled. My breath was ragged, but the porch was empty. The man vanished. My parents found me huddled by the door when they returned. It could have been one hour or five. I still clutched the knife in my hand. They reassured me, though their eyes were filled with worry. My dad said he was going to check around the house. I heard him testing the locks. That night, and for several years after, I slept with the lights on. The memory of the dark stranger haunted my life. Though he never appeared again, the terror he created in my heart never fully faded. I grew into a man, 
but the memory of those piercing eyes followed me, a dark shadow lurking at the edges of my mind, never truly gone. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share to keep fascinating content coming here at Nightmare Nexus.